Hi, my name is John, and this is Ahmed, and you're watching Vexit. We're here to talk about Ahmed's passions. This man is passionate. He's got many passions. Well, we are at Larson Gallery in Scottsdale, which is 3705 North Bishop Lane in Old Town Scottsdale. We are here because I have 21 paintings on display. Um, the gallery exhibition started February 2nd and is going on all the way to the end of February. And uh, it is really 23 years in the making of an art series that I've been working on. It's called The Jasmine. And this art series basically features um, jazz musicians that are unsung heroes that you probably heard their music, may know a little bit about them, but really don't know that much about them. And my goal is to kind of bring more awareness to them. Uh, a lot of these jazz musicians are in the Jazz Hall of Fame, but a lot of people don't know who they are. And so to me, my goal is to kind of like put a spotlight on them. Um, this auction slash exhibit, um, the partial proceeds are going to a foundation, charity foundation called the Molina School for Jazz. And I gotta give a shout out to uh, William Doc Jones. Uh, he's the head of the Scottsdale International Jazz Organization, but he's also the uh, head of the, um, the Molina School for Jazz, which uh, is a charitable, charitable organization that provides uh, musical training and instruments for youth that wouldn't normally have the opportunity to, to have that. So when I had the opportunity and was invited to do this, oh my God, I, I jumped at it. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, let's go check out some of your work. Yeah, come on guys. Uh, is this where it all started? Well, it, the whole series started in 1998. Um, I had an ex-girlfriend's grandmother that basically saw some of my artwork uh, after I got out of college. My dad had commissioned me to do some pieces of an artist named Charles White. And she's like, you need to paint jazz. And so this whole series, really started from this. Uh, Joe Williams, uh, he played Felicia Rashad's dad on The Cosby Show, so he was on there about six times or so. But that's, if you don't know that he was a jazz singer, famous jazz singer, um, then you might know him from that. He was supposed to be at uh, the Chandler Jazz Fest in 1999, but unfortunately he passed away a month before it. Um, we still had the painting in the lobby, um, and it got great feedback and actually I was able to get um, his wife's uh, information and we ended up corresponding and long story short, she ended up wanting uh, a print and I sent her one and she sent me some memorabilia and uh, it was amazing to have her kind of blessing and it's called The, the Unicorn, um, it's jo of Joe Williams. And then uh, what type of medium? medium this, is, this is oil, oil on canvas. I, I wouldn't change anything. To me, this painting is exactly how I wanted it to come out and I'm very happy with it, so. So, uh, I'm gonna do a little self-serving. Yeah. Miles Davis is one of my all-time favorite yes. musicians. Yes. Can we go look at that? Of course we can, definitely. Right. I did the whole jazz series. I can't tell you how many times I heard, you need to paint Miles Davis, you need to paint Miles Davis. And in fact, I had shown uh, my Joe Williams uh, to Clarence Yvonne. Um, and if you don't know who that is, he actually has a Netflix series on, um, called The Black Godfather. And when he saw my jazz series the, the, that I had finished, especially my Joe Williams, he's like, you gotta paint Miles Davis, you gotta paint Miles Davis. And, but he wasn't the only one. Uh, there were so many people that, that kept saying that to the point where I was like, all right, I gotta listen, I gotta paint Miles Davis. So in the whole series, I didn't want to kind of tie it together because a lot of these jazz musicians have played with the Miles Davis, have played with Miles Davis as well as Dizzy Gillespie. So yeah, I feel like it is important for me to kind of bring in some of the people that, that are like the rock stars of jazz uh, to tie into the whole series so that it kind of puts it in perspective and then kind of ties it together a little bit more. How did you uh, get into the gallery? I mean, how did you like, what well, was your process? Well, the process of, of you, I feel like any artist getting into a gallery is, is that's when your mind has to switch gears. And when I say that, it's not just focusing on the smaller picture and the piece that you're working on. It's either having a series of art or having some type of vision that connects bigger than just that piece of artwork. And I feel like that's kind of really the start of how any one artist can get into galleries right. and as you grow up for it. And so it's not just the pieces, but it's also the artist and your mindset. You know, how hungry and how directed are you and how focused are you 
Um, and where, where's your vision? And where's your passion with it? You know, so I feel like those are the combinations and the keys to kind of getting into places like this. And then were you self-taught or did you, uh, how, how did you how get did these become, skills? Uh, yeah, how did I get these skills? Well, yeah, I mean, originally, yes, I was self-taught. Um, my dad taught me how to draw when I was three years old. And um, I come from a very creative family and background. Uh, my mom was a, she created handcrafted jewelry. Uh, both my parents were educators, they're both teachers, but my dad was an artist and painter on the side and my mom created, uh, like I said, handcrafted jewelry, amazing jewelry. And so I lived in a household full of art. And so that kind of, it, 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 it helped branch like, and kept the fire going in me, and it grew and grew and grew. And I, being that I was born in DC, we would always go to the museums. And so we saw, I saw artwork and all over the place. And I just thought it was natural and normal that, to see it. And so for me to kind of start to do it, it, it just kind of felt like, well, this is, what we're, this is what I'm supposed to do, you know, whether I knew that or not. And so that's kind of how it started. And then um, I just kind of progressed and in high school, I, I, my, my drawing skills became really, really good, but I wasn't really a, that good of a painter. And I remember there was a, a, a kid in school that was a really, really good painter, and I was like, wow, like, how does he do that? And, uh, but lo and behold, the funny thing about art and, is, and the creative process is that, you know, just because you're not at a place you, uh, you think you should be today, doesn't mean that you won't be there tomorrow. You know, you have to, you have to put the time and energy in, and, uh, and again, that's really what it takes, but it's good to see somebody your age who is better than you because sometimes what that does is that it's not about competitiveness but what it does is it inspires you to go well i want those skills i want to paint like that i want that to come out of me and so i you know little by little i knew that that i wanted to do something with art even my parents they knew that i was going to do something with art even in college um and so i definitely um my goal was to become um you know a fine artist and um, portrait illustration was, was, was really the, the strength of what I focused on. Now I changed my major because, you know, uh, in college it's not like, you know, what, what are you gonna do with that? I mean, like, make money with it. And so that's the funny thing about art and business and school is that they can teach you skills, but at the same time, you have to be realistic. And so I ended up going to advertising design um, as my major, but, I had an emphasis on painting illustration, and I loved I loved painting people. Yeah, dude, this is George Vincent, man. Um, yeah, when, when I uh, when I saw the image of this, I was like, I got to do this. I got to do this painting of George. And uh, the name of this painting is called Neon Dreams, and for obvious reasons, I wanted to really highlight the neon light hitting his face um, and the just the intensity of him playing. Um, my goal to obviously is that you can hear him singing and playing the guitar at the same time, but uh, I have so much respect for this man. He's amazing talent. Um, his work is legendary. And so for me, he was definitely one I had to add to the Jasmine Art Series. Uh, can definitely see there's a lot of feeling in your painting. Thank you. Uh, how does it make you feel when you are in the act of painting? Wow, you know, um, I try to lose myself. Honestly, man, I try to lose myself in the art. Um, you know, I, I try to envision kind of, you know, the mindset of the subject. Um, I try to envision, you know, me kind of watching them play, like I can hear them play. And my goal is to kind of combine that into like an art form that you can hear it while you're listening, like I said, when you're when you're looking at the painting, my goal is to have you hear them, a song or a note or a certain, like maybe if you, weren't, if you did go see him um, in concert, that you, it would remind you of a moment that you had. And so that's the goal um, for every, every one of these musicians that I paint. And like I said, I, I, I'm very happy with it. And I would love for, for George Benson to see this painting for sure. That would be huge. If anybody knows George Benson, Give him a shout out. <laughs> this is uh, Kirk Whalum. Okay. And Kirk Whalum has, I mean, he's, he's a heavy hitter nowadays uh, in the world of jazz. But if you don't know who he is, he's played background for Luther Vandross. He went on tour with Whitney Houston. 
Um, so he's, he's, a, he's one of the heavy hitters in jazz. Uh, and so he actually came out here last year and performed at the uh, Flagstaff, or no, at the Tucson Jazz Festival. Um, I wasn't able to go uh, see him because I wanted him to see the painting. But um, man, I'm telling you, this painting gets a lot of attention. People love this painting. And so to me, um, I would love for him to see it, but to me, it's awesome that, that this painting draws people in. This is Louis Armstrong, or otherwise known as Satchmo. Um, so without, without, without Louis Armstrong, man, none of these musicians today would have been able to even really be where they are. So Louis Armstrong was really the first that went mainstream as an African-American jazz musician who was able to cross over, um, even in a time where really, um, you know, blacks weren't even allowed in the clubs to even listen to jazz or even when they were on stage, um, you know, they had to go the, to, um, through the back way and they weren't able to drink in there or anything or really kind of enjoy the music. So, you know, he was the one that took a lot of, of kind of like, not only did he break barriers, but he went through a lot. So everybody knows who this is, Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, I learned something new today. I mean, actually I'm learning a lot of good things. But <laughs> specifically that uh, Martin Luther King was an advocate for music and yes. can you explain why. Definitely, well, first of all, I wanted to say that uh, this painting of Martin Luther King Jr. that I did is called In His Eyes for many reasons. Um, but yeah, um, basically, King also acknowledges jazz as a powerful tool in story of civil rights, right? And in 1964, much of the power of our freedom movement in the United States has come from this music. It has strengthened us with its sweet rhythms when courage began to fail. So again, um, I knew that it was important to add him to the whole jazz, jazz and art series because of uh, obviously the significance of Martin Luther King Jr., but also because he acknowledges that the music was something that was a tool to be able to kind of, um, to get us through. I feel like that's a good segue into uh, your brand that you started. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I like that, I for mean, sure. What, what is the brand? I mean, he's wearing a really cool shirt, oh, and there's you. a reason for it. Can you yeah. tell us? Of course, of course. Well, guys, in 2020, obviously, it's a crazy time. We all went through a lot. And uh, on top of the pandemic, um, there was just a lot of craziness going on. And so in the world, uh, especially in our country, I felt like, you know, I could be part of the kind of the anger and frustration that we were feeling, or I could start to kind of find a way to become part of the solution. And my goal was to become part of the solution. And so I created and trademarked the phrase, stop the hate, violence, and division. And so my goal is I don't care who you voted for, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. My goal ultimately is about how can we find common ground? How do we bring civility back into a world? How do we bring families, repair families that have now hated each other because of who they voted for and then the differences? And it's like, instead of focusing on the differences, let's focus on, on what we have in common. And so to me, it was like, okay, well, you know, music, art, um, you know, uh, sports. Uh, there's so many things that we can talk about. You can talk to somebody for six hours and and may be completely opposite on sides of the, of aisle, yeah. but yeah. you find passion and 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 um, just that commonality within cars or, or or music or travel. And so my goal is to let's talk about that because the more we can talk about those things, the more we can possibly meet in the middle and kind of kind of maybe not maybe agree to disagree, but not 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 have that hate and that anger and that anxiety. That, that really kind of followed us and, and, and continues to somewhat follow us even today. So my goal is to, I, I created um, Stop the Hate Violence and Division, but I also created Love Heals too, because my goal was, okay, well, you know, I, I, I don't wanna just focus on, you know, the, the negative toxicity of the Stop the Hate Violence and Division, but love, love and, and love healing and, and it's, it's power to be able to unite us is really kind of why I started that as well. So I felt like the combination of both um, really are, um, it fuels my passion. Um, I started traveling. Um, I've got, now I, I have shirts in, in, uh, in Egypt. I've got shirts, 70 shirts in, in Egypt. I've got shirts 40 in South Africa. I've got shirts in Germany and I've got shirts in Switzerland and I've got shirts in, e uh, I said Egypt, 
but I have in Kenya and, uh, and, and Ethiopia and, and actually I can go on and on because the beautiful part is is that I have shirts in all seven continents and the beautiful part is is that I, I created Stop the Hate Violence and Division in 2020 but I didn't get the t-shirts out until 2021. So from 2021 to the beginning of 2023, I have shirts in, in, in all seven continents and so I would have thought if I was able to do that, it would probably take me eight to 10 years to do. And I've done it um, in really uh, um, about two years. So That's to me- awesome. If they wanted to get one of these shirts, how would they contact you? Well, first of all, um, because of the demand of these shirts and what I'm doing with them, unfortunately they're on back order right now. But um, I'm still t making a list. Um, so if you're interested in wanting a shirt, a Love Heel shirt or Stop the Hate Violence or Division shirt, um, or a ball cap or beanie or a wristband, uh, let me know. You can uh, reach me at uh, my Instagram handle at Stop the Hate Violence and Division. Um, you can also go to uh, my website, which will be out um, probably in about a week or so at www.stopthehateviolenceanddivision.com. Uh, well, so those are ways, but yeah, unfortunately right now there, there is a little bit of a back order on the shirts. For some of you who may not know, I'm a painter as well. Uh, that's kind of how me and I met. met. Uh, I was doing live painting and he came up, we started talking. He's Definitely. like, I'm an artist too. And I was like, really? Yeah. So we need to connect, man. Definitely. And so, uh, can you tell us about your name? Uh, about four months ago, I went to Kenya. Um, I'm named after Ahmed the Elephant. And Ahmed the Elephant has the largest tusks of any elephant um, ever. Um, it, the, he had armed guards around him 24 seven for like the last four years of his life. And when he passed, they took his, um, his skeleton remains and put it in the Nairobi National Museum. And so not only do they have a fiberglass model of him with his tusks on the outside of the museum, but they also have his skeleton and remains with his tusks on the in inside of the museum. And so I, had, I knew that I needed to go visit because I'm named after him and it was time for me to connect and really kind of be true to myself because I used to go by AJ for 20 some odd years, but you know, when I sign my artwork, it's always Ahmed, uh, my name is Ahmed, so it's time for me to be true to myself and that's kind of why um, I went back to Ahmed. So I heard that story on Instagram, this goes back to where I was holding this, I painted this for my father and that's I think so awesome. that you should have this part. Oh man, that's so uh, awesome, thank you so much and brother. Also, Definitely that. wanted to trade church with you. Oh, of course, of course. Trade our brands. Oh, and yeah, yeah. I'm definitely. hoping that uh, we can work together. Definitely. Stop the hate violence and division. And then follow your passions, which this man is definitely doing. Oh, well, thank you, man. I you appreciate go, that. Brother. There you go, Thanks, dude. man. Of course, man. Run on, run on. Definitely, definitely. Well, guys, if you can, please follow him on Instagram. Please hit him up. Uh, follow us or subscribe to YouTube. And, and, uh, and also come to Larson Gallery. Again, uh, my uh, 21 pieces of my jazz art series will be here to the end of February. Um, there is gonna be another uh, grand opening, reopening on the 22nd of uh, February. But yeah, but um, my- Wait, what time is that gonna be? That's gonna be probably, um, most likely, probably five to 8 p.m. like it was the initial. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, that'll be another grand, grand reopening. But my artwork will be here all through February at Larson Gallery, 3705 North Bishop Lane.